everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF, another Friday is come and gone. And uh, today I want to do something a little bit different. Uh, you know, I, I love the old time stories. You know, the last video I did with the Reacher, you know, the Giraffe Reacher from uh, the Bridgeport Hardware Manufacturing Company. I was, uh, I love some of the stories that uh, that you left in the comments about how uh, that reminded you of years ago and the, the old time grocery stores and things like that. And I just, I love that stuff. And uh, speaking of that, a couple, a while back, a friend of the show by the name of Eddie, Eddie sent in a, uh, he said, you know, I know you sometimes might have uh, subjects that you come up on to talk about. And he was wondering if I could talk about some uh, portable anvils. And uh, the reason he said that is because it brought back memories of when he was younger. Uh, his father was in the Navy and uh, his grandfather uh, retired when he was born. So uh, his grandfather spent a lot of time with him and taught him all kinds of uh, cool things about tools and things like that. His father used to work in the roundhouse at a railroad. And uh, he had uh, a portable anvil that he had given Eddie. And Eddie used to use these, you remember the double-headed nails that you used to get their temporary nails. That's why there's two heads on them. And uh, he said his grandfather showed him how to make little miniature swords out of them using the anvil and, and the hammer and the banger. And I said, wow, that's a great idea. But, uh, it, you know, a portable anvil is something everybody should have in their shop, you know, and, and it takes a, away a lot of the beatings you usually do on your vice. So let's talk about that today. Now, this is the anvil Eddie's grandfather gave to him. It's actually a piece of an old train axle. How cool is that? Now, if you're anything like me, probably your first introduction to the anvil came from Wild E. Coyote and his adventures in chasing the Roadrunner. But um, uh, there is a lot of good uses for an anvil in the shop, and unfortunately, a lot of us don't have the time or space or uh, to to get an anvil, and they they become quite expensive, things like that. I have a couple, but. Um, Everybody should have some kind of small anvil in the shop that they can use to uh, to peen over things and you know it, It'll save your vice from a lot of wear and tear and uh, let me show you a couple okay, This I is some of my portable uh, Anvils that I use when I have to straighten something out and I want to bang something that uh, Needs a little bit of uh, persuasion. This is a piece of standard railroad track It's a little over five and a half inches uh, in length and it's about uh, two and a half inches wide um, This here is a, it's a pretty stout piece of, uh, of steel and it's great for banging on uh, These are smaller pieces from a uh, I guess maybe a narrow gauge or, or some other this is inch and three-quarter wide and uh, they're only about uh, two and a half to uh, less a little less than three inches in in length and these are great for smaller areas like uh, peening over rivets and things like that for leather working and and all sorts of uh, smaller activities then I have this beautiful piece you've probably seen this before at the Dake uh, I bought this piece it's an inch and a half thick by ten inches cold rolled steel and uh, this is some piece of steel, huh? Uh, I would love to, you know, this was a cutoff, I guess, and I bought it on eBay, and the mailmen hate me for the flat rate shipping boxes, but I think this is great. What do you think this weighs? I'm gonna put it on the scale, and we'll check it out at the end of the video. Okay, last time I was at the uh, Long Island Tool Meet, my buddy Steve thought I was out of my mind for buying this. <laughs> you know, um, this thing is, is really a rusty mess, huh? Paid $5 for it, as you could see. Uh, and you can see it was flame cut on the end here. That's always a pain, but, um, my idea was to make some kind of, you know, small anvil out of it or whatever. But the first thing, this is some pretty deep and heavy duty rust. You know, it's been obviously outside for years. It's not a standard gauge rail. It's probably one of them narrow gauge or light gauge rails. I'm going to try and submerge this in some vinegar for a couple days and see now, what happens. Now here is my two year old bucket of vinegar and I know it's not going to be big enough to cover this thing but we'll get it in. It covers most. I'll flip it and uh, now I'm going to leave it in there for a while then I'll uh, brush it a little bit every eight hours or so and we'll see how long before it gets off most of the stuff. Okay it's been ten hours. I tilted the bucket over so that the entire part was covered with the vinegar and uh it's been 10 hours let's take a look at what it looks like uh you can see here that the rust is starting to oh it's starting to uh dissolve a little bit now we again it's uh we take a spid spid brush and we just brush off some of the loose particles here and then we'll immerse it again 
for another eight or 10 hours and we'll be back to see what it looks like. So this is, you have to do that between about every eight hours, soak it and brush okay, it. Okay, here we are after two and a half days of soaking in vinegar and just wiping it down with that uh, spit brush. You could see here, it, it, you know, a lot of the rust is off here. Uh, we still have some massive pitting and things like that, but this is a uh, perfectly usable anvil in the, the shape it's in now. But we're going to uh, to take off some more of this rust and get it clean so we don't feel like we're getting rust on our hands when we're using it. And to do that, we're going to use the angle grinder, but uh, and and maybe some of the coarse wire wheel. Here we have it after the wire brushing. You can see not a tremendous difference, but it's getting cleaner. Now, um, one of the better values at home at uh, Harbor Freight, if you ever get a chance, is the seven piece grinder brush set. And uh, what it is, it comes with these knurled wire brushes, which are pretty much, you can't use them on many things, but stuff like this, it's fantastic for, because this is a really heavy duty wire brush. And it also has the cupped wire brushes. And uh, that's what we're gonna be using on here. And uh, these things are always on sale. I think they're like $10. You can't beat it for the price. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this rail looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. And, uh, you know, halfway through this project, I was starting to think that Steve might be right. I might have bit off a little bit more than I could chew with this one. But you know what? I kept working through it. And uh, we did a nice job on this. You know, it's uh, it, this is going to be a great addition to our portable anvils here. And let me talk a little bit about, uh, about this particular uh, piece of track here. First of all, um, when you're looking to, to have a portable anvil, first of all, uh, you want it as flat as possible, but flatness is, it comes secondary to smoothness. You want it to be smooth because anything you're going to hammer on this is going to make an imprint on. So if you hammer leather or aluminum or something like that, if you have one that's all has, you know, nicks and gouges, it's going to show up into that material. So you want it pretty smooth. Uh, this one here is, is fairly straight. You can see here when we put the, uh, square on here. You know, it is fairly straight, you know, it's, uh, you know, good enough for government work, so to speak. And you can see it's got a nice, uh, nice finish. Now, to the what top. I did is, besides doing the top, the nice polished uh, and the side here, uh, all this here, I took the rust off the best I could with the wire brush. And then I treated it with muriatic acid. You use one part muriatic acid to three parts water. You wipe it down and you let it sit for 15 minutes. And then it turns to like a, a gray, like a dull gray. And that's converted to rust more or less and that seals it up and then what you do is you rinse it with hot water for another 10 minutes so make sure that all that is off there and then what you do is uh i just you know painted it after it dried and then put on the furnace for a couple days so you can see it's uh i like it this is going to come in really handy a good reason i will cut it down eventually but a long uh portable anvil is good because you can clamp it down but let's just talk about two, uh, about two basic things you need for uh, any now, kind of anvil. Two things anvil. you're going to need with uh, any kind of anvil or portable anvil is you're going to need mass and hardness. And let's talk about those. Okay, here's a quick demonstration on mass and hardness. Uh, obviously, this plywood here has no hardness, no mass, because it's only a thin piece of plywood. And uh, this here has a little bit more mass and this, you know, a little bit more hardness, obviously, because it's metal. And this one here, the same type of hardness, but less mass. So let's see what happens. When we drop this hammer, we look for what's called a rebound. And uh, rebound is how much this bounces back, at, you know, from when we drop it. So I'm going to just drop it over here. And you can see it has very little bounce because of uh, there's no hardness to it. Here we have a little bit of hardness and a little bit of mass from here. See what happens here. You see that? How that bounces back? Now I'm going to try it on the small one. Same hardness but less mass. See, there's no bounce to it. So you need mass, you need hardness. It's kind of a now, combination. One quick and easy way to tell if something's hard 
is they call it the peen test. And what that means is you, you tap it with something like a hammer or something and you listen for the tone, for the sound of the peen. Now, uh, there's something that says, you know, old time anvils, you know, used to be, they were called live. They were live because when you th uh, bounced a hammer off an old time anvil or a hard anvil, you would hear a ping. It would ring. They said it would ring like an anvil. That's a, that's a good sign of a hard anvil. If you drop a hammer on an anvil and it makes a thudding sound, that's a dead anvil, what they call dead because it's not pinging and uh, that means it's kind of uh, soft or, you know, worn out or something. So uh, that's what you test a lot of times hardness for. Now, different metals have different hardnesses. Now, depending what is in steel, you know, the, the composition, they, they grade it usually in numbers. Like tool steel could be O1 or D2 and it, that just depends on what's in the steel. Track steel here is typically uh, a steel we call 1084. And and it has its properties because it has to be able to be strong and not chip and break. And so everything has its own properties. Uh, a ball bearing is a very good steel and that's called 52100. And uh, that's a real hard steel. Now, a lot of times what they used to do to check the the liveliness or the bounce of an anvil is uh, they would take a ball bearing and they would bounce it off of the uh, anvil and see how high the rebound bounces off. And by if it comes up... Uh, 70, if you drop it from here and it comes up about 70%, they say that anvil's 70% live, you know? But another way to check it and a lot, a way a lot of old time blacksmiths did is they would just bang a hammer and listen for the, the ping and the rebound of the hammer. Now, uh, you know, we did this before with the, uh, the, uh, anvil, uh, the portable anvil here, the railroad track, but, let me show you here, this here, this is a cast, this is an anvil vise, and these were typically known as being dead because they're made of cast iron. And watch what happens and listen to the sound when I hit this. Typically it sounds almost like dead because these, and now you could flatten stuff out on here, but you know, these were not considered good quality anvils. Now, this piece of track that I just got, this is kind of a rare piece because this is a little harder than most tracks. Now, the, the 1084, you could uh, temper at different uh, hardnesses, and uh, this one here is pretty hard. So listen to this compared to the other ones I have now. You hear that? You hear Now listen to this. Now, any of my blacksmith friends out there now is saying, holy cow, this is like, uh, this is a real gem to find something that's this hard. You know, when you compare it, that's what a, a, a good hard anvil is supposed to sound like. That's a, the ring that everybody now, lastly, loves. Lastly, I've had this one, like I said, for the long, I've had this one since I'm a kid and I've used this on everything. The problem is, you see what happens to the face after beating on it or something, it gets those deep nicks and everything, and that's, you know, that's no good, because now, anytime I'm going to bang something, this should have been surfaced or, or faced off at one time or another, and I'm going to show you in, in real time how long it takes to do, just to face this off, to make it somewhat smoother, to get rid of some of these gouges, so I'm not transferring onto the item. So the first thing you want to do is you move it to the edge here, and we're going to clamp it down with a couple clamps, and then take out the, uh, the angle. about track anvils, the problem is, because of this angled item here, it's a little harder to clamp down. So some guys drill holes and bolt it onto a board that they can clamp on. So it's harder to clamp this down, you see. That's why I like the longer anvil. I can clamp one now side. Now I'm going to use two uh, surface pads for this. And uh, one is a, a 60 grit, brand new uh, disc. And the other one is a worn out uh, 120 grit. So we're just going to use these two first, the 60 grit to take out some of these nicks and then the other one to smooth it out. Okay. This is the finish that you get with just the uh, 60 grit and you can see we didn't use too much of the pad. It's not really worn out. Uh, but you can see here, that's the 60 grit lines that it leaves. But we took out all them deep nicks and gouges. And now we're going to go to the, uh, oh, it's kind of a worn out 120. And uh, that'll smooth it out and give it a nice finish. Okay, and here we are. That's just the two pads. You can't grip anything with your nail. Nice and smooth. You can see here, it's somewhat of, you can see, I could take it down to a mirror finish with a buffing, but 
you don't want to go crazy because when you start banging on this you're going to leave surface marks and you just you want to be able to finish it off and go over it real quick how long did that take to put a new surface on here and that's the way you want to keep your surfaces of all your well, portable closing, want to say special thanks to eddie for suggesting the video uh thanks to all of you for tuning in hope you all have a nice weekend take care now bye, -bye. okay this piece of steel here this inch and a half by 10 inches cold rolled steel weighs in at 34.72 pounds, so it's a hefty piece of steel.